Okay, let's do one with the square root. Now first thing, we'll make sure that the mean value theorem can be applied here. We have to first check to make sure that our original function is continuous on that closed interval from 0 to 1. With square roots, you just have to make sure that you're not taking the square root of a negative number. So if I put 0 in here, I get square root of 0, which is 0, that's okay. If I put 1 in there, I get a 0. Square root of 0 is okay as well. Anything in between 0 and 1 would not give me any negative numbers underneath, which means that we know it's definitely continuous on that closed interval. The next thing we have to do is make sure that it's continuous on the open interval from 0 to 1 for the derivative. So let's do the derivative. Now, before I, I jump into the derivative, what might make this easier to avoid doing a chain rule and, and a product rule together would be I'm just going to multiply the inside out. So I get x minus x squared, and then I'll write that to the 1 half power. So I'm going to rewrite it as this. I didn't do any derivative yet. All I'm doing is rewriting it. So now I need to do a, a chain rule. One half comes down first. I have x minus x squared. Subtract one from the exponent, but with chain rule, don't forget, you want to also multiply it by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside is 1, don't forget the 1 there, minus 2x. Okay, so 1 minus 2x is going to be your uh, derivative. Let's rewrite it into a fraction. That's going to be one on top, I have 1 minus 2x. On the bottom I have a 2 and then the square root of, I'm going to go ahead and write it back in the original form. I'll make it look like this one. So I have 2 square root x times 1 minus x. So now I need to, to check to make sure this satisfies the mean value theorem. Now, I know that if I put 0 and 1 into here I'm going to get a 0. However, remember that when you check for differentiability with mean value theorem, you're considering the open interval. So we're not actually including the endpoints from 0 to 1. So that actually this is still going to satisfy the mean value theorem um, because even though I put in, even though I get zeros and divide, division by 0 is undefined, I'm not including those. So as long as I pick numbers in between 0 and 1, again it's going to be uh, continuous. So that's going to be okay. Now that we've done that, we have to do this and find the value for C that satisfies that which means I need to set up this equation. So here's our uh, derivative. Let me rewrite it. I'm going to do f primed of c. So I can just go ahead and I'll just go ahead directly and put in a c for that one. We have c times 1 minus c. All that's underneath the square root. So that's the left hand side of our formula, f primed of c. On the right hand side, we're doing this calculation right here. I'm going to do these off to the side first. Uh, f of b and f of a, well we actually we don't even need to write that on the side, we already talked about those already, we know that f of b and f of a are both going to be 0. We're using the original function, 0 and 1, we're just going to get 0 for that. So I get 0 minus 0 across the top, on the bottom I have b minus a, 1 minus 0. So therefore, the equation I want to solve is going to be this one, 1 minus 2c, 2 square root c times 1 minus c, this has to equal zero. To solve for something like this, we're going to do cross multiplication. So if I multiply uh, these two, I get 1 minus 2c, but if I multiply this diagonal, zero times anything is zero, so therefore I get 1 minus 2c is going to equal uh, zero. If I solve for this, I'm going to get negative 2c equals negative 1c is equal to 1 half. Now 1 half that number does definitely fit between 0 and 1, so therefore it makes sense if we've already talked about it before we know that mean value theorem can be applied, then you're guaranteed a C value that's going to fall uh, in between your interval from A to B, and 1 half certainly does.